everyone in the house today are pastors, everyone. But particularly, I want to honor all the mothers and mothers-to-be. If you are female, please be upstanding. The world in particular, May 8th will be for the Americas, but UK, Nigeria, Africa, and if some other countries are celebrating us today. And I want to say happy, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. You will reap the fruit of your labors in the name of Jesus. And when your children are celebrating, you will not be in the mortuary. Give yourself a big hand for a job well done. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning, I'm bringing a short word as instructed by my husband, Bishop Felix Adejimo. Let's celebrate him. I want to speak briefly on a message I have titled, Mothers That Generations Can Never Forget. We want to pull the curtains back and look at their lives. Just three of them. There are several others. A few weeks ago, I was preaching in Calabar. And they showed me one area where Mary Slessor, you know, and the tables of those colonial masters and all that are still there. I'm going to go back and have a proper visit and a proper documentary, you know, and all that. That's one woman that stood up for twins and stopped the killing of twins. So there are mothers, there are women that generations can never forget. I hope you and I will be able to make that list one day. As I share this message with us, I want to first and foremost bring my apologies to any mother whose child has been rude or is subordinate. Any mother that labored over her child and the child did not turn out the way you wanted the child to turn out, or the child at one point became very rude to you, insolent, spoke against you, robbed you of your honor, I most sincerely apologize on behalf of that child. Please forgive. Please forgive. The Lord will reward you and heal your wound in the name of Jesus. I also want to apologize to any child that any mother has been very bad to. I want to apologize to any child that didn't have the pleasure of a great mother. I want to apologize. I feel your pain. I understand I've been there. Of any child that was murdered instead of being mothered by any woman. Apologize and I pray for you today that God will surpass your expectations over your own life. Please say amen on their behalf. I also want to honor every single mother in the house. Whether you are divorced or you are separated or you had your kids when you were not married at all. I want to salute you and I want to say well done to you. It's not a funny journey to raise a child all by yourself with the father figure, the father authority missing. It takes a lot. Even where the father is present, it's still not easy raising one child, not to talk of two or three or four or five. I want to salute you. The world is passing today to bless you as a single mother and to say well done. It does not matter the biases and the prejudices. It does not matter what you are going through or what you have been through. It does not matter what people have said negatively about you. Some have misjudged you. Some have called you funny names. Remember, different kinds of people are in the market. Some go there only for shopping, window shopping. 
So you don't listen to the noise of the market. The only way by which God can respond to your critics is for those children to turn out well. So keep your energy on raising those children. Keep your focus on raising those children and trust the father of the fatherless to ensure that those children turn out well and that you are alive when they are dancing their dances. And my prayer for you is that in the name of Jesus Christ, you will be rewarded. Yeah. I also want to speak to those of you that are widows. You lost your husbands. So not only are you raising children all by yourself, but your husband is not physically here. Remember, God is the husband of the widow. And what their fathers couldn't do for them, God will overdo for them in the name of Jesus. Be encouraged. That's not the end of your life. It may be the end of a chapter in your life, but it is not the end of the entire book of your life. So I want you to know that God is coming and he will reward you. So whether you're a widow, you're separated, or you're a single parent and all that, I pray for you that God will send you a Boaz that will accept your responsibility, accept your liability, accept you as you are, love on the children, and together you will have a happy ending. Let's clap for these categories of people. They are doing so well. And most of the time, we just overlook them because we think they are not in the regular family settle. Sometimes they do more than those of us that are privileged to be in such spaces. We honor you today and we thank God for you. Every mother has five kinds of children. Some of you have heard me say this before. I just want to remind you. Number one, you have your biological children. And you can always flip it if you're a man. So you don't say, oh, it's all about women. You can always flip it. The same thing goes for you as a man or as a father. You have your biological children. If you are privileged to be pregnant and to give back to children, so you have your biological children. Number two, you have your natural children. These are the children that your children, your biological children will marry or be married to. Number three, you have your spiritual children. If you're a child of God, you're born again, you know that God expects you to reproduce after your kind in honor of Jesus. Number four, you have adopted children. Some of them adopted you, you did not even know. That woman in the market that sells tomatoes and you always bless the child, you play for the, with the child, you tell the child, you need to write jam. Sometimes you even paid for the exam. You paid the fee. You may not know it. That's your adopted child. Or you sponsor a child in one orphanage in Kenya, in Tanzania, or anywhere in my orphanage. You bless someone. You bless a child that is vulnerable. You are a mother. You are a parent to that child. And then finally, you have your destiny children. Children that are not related to you by blood, by spirit, by soul, by whatever. But you see, you met them on the journey of life. You stepped into their lives and you have an assignment to fulfill in their lives. So you have these five kinds of children as a man, as a woman. Biological, natural, spiritual, adopted, and destiny children. And these are huge and massive and colossal responsibilities that you cannot afford to fail. When looking briefly at the mother that generations cannot forget as we celebrate Mother's Day. Today is the monthly Sunday, 2022. There are four kinds of mothers and therefore fathers. Number one, you have absentee mothers. They are never there. Generations cannot forget them. They are never there. They are busy in ministry. They are busy in business. They are busy in politics while their children are growing up. They don't show up. They are not there. They are absentees. And when they are there, they are not there. Let me give you a snippet of our journey. My husband and I, by God's grace, my husband is the founder of this ministry. So he's a, he's a bishop. 
and we've been married almost 38 years. When our kids were young, when they were toddlers and babies, both of us, in fact, when we were cutting, both of us agreed that we will raise our children by ourselves. Our parents will not raise our children. Both of us had the four living. No house help, no nanny will raise our children. We agreed. So I put my career on hold for a while while my husband was working to raise our kids. And then after a few years, as though, because we had them in quick succession, we agreed that that's what we were going to do. We wanted them to grow together. Let's change the diapers together and then let them grow. Let's be involved. It's not that we had one now and then 15 years after. No, no, no. Let's, let's make these sacrifices together. As these children began to grow, we didn't know that God would put us in ministry. As these children began to grow, the responsibility of pastoring this ministry came upon us and it was not easy at all. After the ministry started, I got pregnant again. So with pregnancy, being the first sweeper in church with three toddlers, it was heavy. I thank God for my junior sister. She was with us and that helped. When I speak about nanny or house helps, it is not practicable in this age. I'm talking about 30 something years ago. There's no way you will survive now with a career without a house help or a nanny. So don't misquote me. FFA says nanny is evil. I'm just telling you my story and my work. And it is, not, it is peculiar to me. It is peculiar to my husband. It was what we decided. Because we didn't like the stories we were hearing about children. We didn't like what we were seeing about pastor's children. They didn't have time for them. And they did not turn out well. So when we understood that we would be in ministry, we made up our minds that these children are blank sheets of paper. By God's grace, we are going to write what we believe God has laid on our hearts by our own fingers. As these children began to grow, I did not travel anywhere. My mates were leaving me behind, traveling, preaching, Doing meetings, I did not. I was lost in my children's world. My husband and I, every Thursday evening, we went nowhere. We didn't take no appointments. We had to stay with the children. It was our family night. They will ask us any questions. Why should I be married as a virgin? What is menses? How does pregnancy come? We did not do Bible study for them on Thursdays. We answered their questions because we did not want televisions said to answer. We did not want the world to answer. We were there. We grew up together. Our family is like this. That's why it's impossible to break the bond. It's not an occult, but it is something we have decided must be Perpetuated. So I tell my children, natural and biological, pray that your children will be one. That is what we call tribal energy. It's important because there are too many envious relations in the world. You cannot afford for your children to be scattered. And if you're here this morning, you and your siblings are not together. It's a demonic attack. You need to pray about it. I still pray about it. I still pray this morning in the bathroom. Nobody will scatter my children in love. They will grow together. They will be united. As they get married, those ladies or those men will blend. As their children come up, they also will blend as cousins. There are too many problems, family problems in the world. We don't want to add to that. As our children began to grow and the call of God came upon my life, I would travel with these children. And they would sit down and I would acknowledge them. Thank you for not allowing the microphone to be snatched from your daddy's hand. Thank you for making it open that the gospel works. Thank you for living your lives in such a way that people know that as a pastor's child, you can be well read, you can be married as a virgin, 
you can love Jesus. And I would say things like that. As they began to move to another stage, before I preach, Austria, Germany, London, America, anywhere, I would take them along and I would hand over the microphone to them, either to sing or to bring a short word. My husband would say, let them do it so that they will know that God did not steal us from them. We don't want to serve the God that took our parents' time. In this sanctuary, there was a time I heard a pastor's, a conference of pastor's children. I cried when I listened to their stories. Too many pastor's children are in pains. Get out, get out, get out. People want to sleep. Nobody's there. We talk about pastors. We talk about the pastor's wives. But what about the children? People assume that they drop from heaven, so they must not cry in church. They must not misbehave. And you call yourself a pastor's child. As if they don't have to go through infancy and childhood and 10 years. As if they are not human. As if they don't have their challenges. And we will tell our children, it does not matter how bad it is. Just make sure you don't lie to us. Whether you are in the deepest part of the whatever, I'll be there with you as your mother. I'm glad they turned out well. I'm grateful to God that they are turning out well. To Jesus alone be the glory. And now today, I turn down invitations from around the world. So if you think you are lost in their world, you think it's a waste of time. It is not. Those children will come back to reward you in the name of Jesus. There are three mothers I want to share with you today and then I'll drop the mic, pray with us and drop the mic. The first mother that generations will never forget is found in the book of Matthew chapter 14 from verse 6. Her name is Herodias. Matthew 14. I was speaking about the kinds of mothers we have. Absentee. Number two is abusive mothers. Bass, bows, any little thing. Bam, boom. You stupid, you silly. Come and ask me. I've been there. All my self-esteem eroded. Forever I will bless the memory of my father. Abusive mothers. Because they are hurting, they hurt you. Some of them because they were expecting a son and you came as a girl, they hate you. Some of them because your husband shows affection to you, they hate you. Some of them because of what they are going through. Maybe you are a product of a family planning device that failed. They didn't want you. They thought they were done and you came. And they begin to maltreat you. Some of them, they don't know better. Abusive. They abuse you psychologically. They abuse you emotionally. They abuse you physically. They use their mouth to abuse you. Look at you, look at you. Just be rolling, be rolling. So you don't know that. Look at your sister. Look at your sister. She's so smart. Look at you. See, see your life. See your life. And they don't know that they are saying something to destroy your self-esteem. That shows later in life. Some fathers are also like that. Very abusive. You abuse the mother, their mothers in their presence. No public show of affection. You talk down on anybody in the presence of your children. Forgetting that the first law of education is repetition. You model it to them. You see the pastor, you greet the pastor. Bless you, sir. You get home, you use the pastor as your toothpick. You don't know you are confusing your children. Because you are their perfect example. And they don't have any eject button. Abusive. Number three, we have permissive mothers. It doesn't matter. Eh, just make sure you, you don't, eh? just make sure you don't get pregnant. Ah, this dress is too short now, my dear. You are going out. Okay, be careful. Hey, hey, I'm telling you now, eh? You don't cook. You don't know how to cook. Eh? Will I be there for you every time? Eh? I'm okay. Learn to cook. Okay. Come and carry your food. Hey, another boy came today. What about that man? 
Hey, if they meet, they call in this house. Eh? Permissive. Anything goes. Anything. Even the way you live your life, the child thinks that money will come anyway. Money will come anyway. You have your body, just give it out. It doesn't matter. You don't need to work. Money will come anyway. That's not how we raise our kids. Even when we have the money, we make them work for it. Because a time is coming when we will not be here again with them. Will they be able to generate it? Because wealth can finish. It can grow wings. If it is not perpetuated in the entire country of Nigeria, only one family is now in the third generation of wealth. The others, first generation. Believing God that it will be perpetuated. Money grows wings. It is not about what you leave for your children. It is about what you leave in them. Any little thing, take. I want ice cream, take. I want pizza, take. I want the mommy, mommy, between them. When my kids were young and we would go to London to even get the ticket, you know now how much was uh, Nigeria Airways. Pastor, do you remember that day? Four days. Because we couldn't afford to change that ticket. To change the ticket. When we're in the mall and I hold your hand like this. And you are saying, mommy, I have bought one toy for you. Mommy, and you are, you are dragging. Shopping has finished. We are going home. When I look like this. And you don't understand the look. And I know that in London I cannot beat you like that. Let's go home. When we get to the apartment and the door is locked, it, your great grandmother will almost come out of the grave that day. So the next time we go out, you will be, Mommy, can I? Mommy, can I? One day we were at a family meeting. I was sharing this on Instagram yesterday with Reverend here, brother. And daddy said, Okay, let's talk about the weaknesses of everybody in this family. And Pastor Dotto said, Mommy's hand is the fastest. She has the ministry of laying on of hands. My husband will explain the reason for the beating. He will take his time. I don't have that time. Which is explanation. By the time daddy finishes, you will beg him to beat you. If I you will tell him, stop, sir. Just beat me. Let me know that it's finished. Me, I don't need any explanation for you. Bass, boss, you know. Sometimes it can be abusive. I'm sorry about it. I apologize. But, you know, praise the Lord. Permissive parents. And then you look at the children. Because they cannot. Some of Nigerian leaders that stole the commonwealth, you know, the wealth that we have that is common, and sent their children to school abroad. Go and see those children. They don't turn out well. It's not about what you leave for them. It's about what you leave in them. Can they recreate your wealth? Leave houses for them. Leave money for them. Can they recreate it? Because in my village they say, I go you logo for a for shit. If you put your life on inheritances, you are set up for lifetime, for a lifetime poverty. After you are finished selling those houses, selling everything, and the person that built them is gone. Can you create the wealth? Can you generate it? It doesn't matter. Leave him. Don't leave him. Oh. It's the future we're talking about. David was a fantastic man of God. David was anointed. David was loved by God, but he missed it in his family life. He produced Amnon that raped his sister. He produced Absalom that chased him out of the throne. He produced Adonijah. And it is not his fault who mentored him. Samuel mentored him. It was because of Samuel's children that Israel asked for a king. And it wasn't Samuel's fault who mentored him, Eli. Be careful who mentors you. Fantastic man, but no family life. Permissive. As you raise your children, please don't make the mistakes your mother made. 
Don't repeat, don't perpetuate the mistakes that your aunties made. They will soon be gone. They've lived their lives. Don't let them live your own. Matthew 14 from verse number 6. A few more minutes and I'll be done. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herod, Diaz, danced before them and pleased Herod. Please go ahead and be very fast. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever. Everybody say whatsoever. whatsoever. Mothers that generations can never forget. Whatsoever. She would ask. And she been before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head in the church. That would have been the richest heiress. The most talked about princess in the Bible. Her mother finished her. She asked for the head of John the Baptist. In three days or max one week, the head became rotten. Instead of treasures. Can we ever forget that kind of a mother? What is your mother asking you to ask from life? What is your mother teaching you and what are you teaching your children? Is it the head of John the Baptist? Don't greet that woman in church. Don't greet her because, because, don't greet her. So you want your children to inherit your enemies. Because your husband left you, you are so bitter. You are telling your children with your attitude, with whatever. Don't ever trust any man. Men are evil. Men are bad. See what your father did. John the Baptist. That's, that's what we're doing unconsciously. Pray for them that they will not make the kind of mistakes. There are still good husbands in the world. I'm married to one of them. They're not perfect, but they're good. It's a pity. It's unfortunate that your husband was not. And I feel for you. But please don't perpetuate this. Don't let it run in the family. Psychologists have discovered that. Stop it. Stop the flow of this evil. Raise your kids well. Tell them. It doesn't matter. For if your father may not have done well, but you, you are a good man. You are not inheriting what he did. You, you are going to turn out well. The children will thank you later. Stop instructing your children to go and ask for the head of John the Baptist. What is the head of John the Baptist? Anything that will not last. Anything that cannot feed them. Anything that cannot make them to stand on their feet. Anything that is evil. Anything that is not a part of their destiny. I stand as a mother here, as a great mother, but not as a perfect one. Therefore, there are mistakes I have made that I don't want my children to make. They should look at my life and learn. This is not how to do it. Like I did with my mother. This is not how to do it. My father and the Lord, Bishop David Oedipo, said to me one day in his office, I learned 23 things from my mentor and 15 were wrong. That's a wise man. And that does not reduce his mentor. Because Hebrews chapter 5, beginning from verse number 1 to verse 4, even the high priest is taken from among men. There are things you know now that I didn't know when I was raising my kids. You should not repeat that mistake as my child. I'm an example for you to know this is how to do it. This is not how to do it. This is wrong. I should kill this. I should take this to another level. That is life. You must be an improvement of the past generation. It must not run in the family. My mother will be pounding yam. You say something, she will use the, is it mortar, pestle, you call it, to hit your mouth. Those of you that are here, you know, there are different kinds of slabs. There are slabs that when they land on your face, you will first see stars of wonder, stars of light, stars, Victor, you know those kind of stars. And to make matters worse, they would say, if you do, if you cry, that's wicked. You'll be doing, what? what? Nothing. African parents, let's clap for them. Herodia, 
Jesus. Terrible. Generations cannot forget her. She wasted that girl's destiny. Let's look at another mother, Rebecca. Genesis 27. Isaac was about to pass the button. Isaac was about to release the covenant. Isaac was ready to go home. And because he knew that some blessings are not said, they are provoked. He called for Esau. You know, many times we talk about Esau. Do you know the greatest challenge Esau had? Late coming. It was lateness. If he had brought the food on time, maybe God would have used another method for Jacob. I cause every spirit of delay in your life. That was the same thing that killed Sapphira. If she was there when the husband died, she would have realized lateness is a terrible thing. You go late to church, you go late to work, on your wedding day you are late. Late, 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 late. It's a terrible thing. Rebecca, please give me that scripture. Genesis 27, let's read it very quickly. Look at verse number 11. And it came to pass, well, let, let, let's go. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. Verse 12, we're going to 13. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a cross upon me and not a blessing. Hear what the helper of destiny said. A mother that generations can never forget. His mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. There are mothers like that. Yesterday I was on Insta Live with Reverend Eboda and he asked me, who is your mentor? Who is your, who is your parenting model? And I said to him, my mother-in-law. That woman died practically in our hands at the age of 110. That woman blessed my life. I had prayed as a single lady about my children. I wasn't married and about my mother-in-law. And God had me. I did not know who will marry me. I prayed about my relationship with my mother-in-law. And because of that prayer, that's the, that's the reason I relate to my daughter's-in-law the way I do. I'm not foolish. I'm not stupid. Because I know in the African setting, the African culture, there is this bias and, you know, whatever between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I didn't want that. And I still don't want that. Not at all. I was preaching in Houston a few days ago. If, well, like three weeks now. And I, I was going to introduce my son-in-law and my daughter. And I said to the congregation, please honor my son that brought his wife. He's my, I didn't say my daughter and her husband. I said, my son, that's my son-in-law, my son that brought, everybody laughed. That's the kind of relationship I want. And that's what we should, let's change the trajectory. Let's change the story. Let's change the narrative. Hey, as I'm going to get married now, hey, Ade, I hope you don't have a mother. Ah, because he's, he's on the list, so, ah, the bucket, ah, I have to, show me ya. And you want to get married one day and expect that your children will pray that kind of prayer? Genesis 8, 22. You saw it, you repeat. Snatch your mother-in-law from your husband. Make her your own mother. She's not perfect. No. But there is great reward. My mother-in-law taught me so much. Sacrifice. Bleeding and still giving just to save your children's lives, just to cover their nakedness. Mothers will always be mothers. Even when those children are married, there are things you will not tell daddy. Daddy will tell you, you mean? He broke his iPad. Daddy will forget that when he too was in part two, he broke his own iPad. I paid his fees. I bought that iPad. You cannot. There are things you will do. Daddy, I hope you are not in church. There are things you will do just to cover your... Sometimes when I'm on the street and I see some inscriptions, inscriptions, I understand. 
Women, may God give you your own. When a woman does not have her own, she suffers, her children suffer. There is no man that can adequately take care of every need. Let me make you laugh again. Your husband is not else shall die, else he shall die. It's true. So you need to help him. No man wants a liability around him. You can sit down at home and just be eating. And be getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And until daddy comes, you cannot buy tomatoes. Until daddy comes, you cannot cook. What kind of a life is that? If you need to go back to school, go back to school. I went back to school after four children. And I led my class. And I'm still in school. Every day I'm in school. My husband said to me this morning, throughout yesterday I was just thinking about you. What kind of a woman is this? You are so inspiring. I'm in business. I'm a coach. I was in London two days ago and I missed my flight. British Airways, first class. That was painful. But suddenly I cried. As Bishop's wife, I cried. Oh. I told Didi, I said, Didi, Didi, I missed my flight. Why did I miss my flight? Because there was confusion between the, the Nigerian government and British Airways. And I had to go do another test that we thought we didn't need. And I missed the flight. I had to go buy another ticket on the spot. Now, you don't have money, you can do that. Hello, daddy. Please send me daddy. Send you what? Stay there in London. Stretch your hand. God will give you your own. Yeah. Am I wasting your time? No. That woman said, let the curse be on me. That is a mother that generations cannot forget. That's a mother that says, look, I will cover your nakedness. That's a mother that says, it doesn't matter. I will pray you through this. That's a mother that will say, my husband told me stories about his mother. Very inspiring stories. And I said to myself, no. No, I must be there for my children. We all need somebody to live in You need a mother. And when I talk about that, it may not even be your biological mother now. Because your biological mother may not have what it takes to take you to the next level. Is there a mother figure, an authority figure that God has blessed your life with? Nurture the relationship. It is foolishness to destroy God-sent relationships. Nurture God-given relationships. Overlook their mistakes and their errors. Get from them what you really want. Sow into their lives. Sow honor. Sow blessings. Whoever is a mother figure in your life, learn from their mistakes. Learn from their strength. And there are mothers that will say, until you succeed, I will not leave you. I close with the last one and I want to use it to pray for mothers here while you are upstanding it's in the book of 2nd Samuel please put that scripture chapter 21 one of my very favorite scriptures because there are incidences in that chapter 21 2nd Samuel 21 and while I'm praying with mothers I want to tell all of you that are not yet mothers give your mother her bouquet when she can smell it one day, my father said to me, Olufunke, I'm okay. All the cows you should have killed when I die, you have given me to eat. I want to pray with you. And we still killed cows. This bishop, I don't know, my husband called me two days, three days ago and said, hey, darling, remind me, self, how many cows did you people kill when your father died? I said, eight. Ah, he said, somebody has broken your record. Though. <laughs> he said, beside our house, yeah, somebody just said that they have killed 15 cows. Ah. <laughs> I said, I bought our own that time now. How many years ago now? I try now. I try now. Eight cows. Ah, I try now. Second Samuel 21, beginning from verse 13. There was famine, you know, and the Gibeonites said that they should kill children. Ah! You 
you will not inherit the battles of your fathers. It's a great prayer I just prayed for you. What you didn't know, I was studying the scriptures recently, and a king, Ahab, God said, I'm going to do this and that, and the man repented. God said, I won't do it in your time. I will do it when you're a child. Eh? The child that didn't know anything, that, that did not know anything, that is what we call inherited battle. The child was not there. It wasn't the child that sinned. God transferred the punishment to the child. You will not inherit the battles of your fathers. Yeah. Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare a slaughter for him because of the iniquity of the father. So that their heads will not rise. It's there in the Bible now. Isaiah 14, 21. Some people have problems today because of what their fathers did. You will not inherit the battles of your household. Please go back to that scripture. I want to pray and take my seat. Second Samuel 21. And Rispa. Let's look at verse 9. Thank you. He delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hung them in the hill before the Lord. These children didn't know anything. No. They were paying for the sins of their fathers. And they fell. Seven children. And they were put to death in the days of harvest. In the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest, yes, verse 10, and Rispa, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread it for her upon the rock from the beginning of harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven and suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the field. But look at the pictorial image of what I just read to you. Those children died because of the iniquities of their fathers, in fact, forefathers, and they laid them in state. You know what you go when you go for lying states? Those children were laid in state. Instead of the children to lie their mother in state, the mother laid them in state. She now took a sackcloth and she was driving away flies, birds of the air from them. And it's, the devil is, I hate the devil. You know the period, it was harvest time. When her mates were harvesting, she was lying her own, her own in state and driving away. When your children should be blessing you, that's not the time you to be taking gari. Not because you just want to take gari, but because they cannot eat if you don't take the gari there. That's what it means. And there's one prayer I want to pray for you. Whether you are married or not, stand up. If you are female and you are going to have a child one day, in fact, the Holy Spirit just... just Changed it. Now, everybody stand up. If you are ever going to have a child, whether you are a man or you are a woman, or you already have a child, one prayer. I hope everyone here is born again and you've given your heart to Jesus. That's a starting point for success. When your mates are harvesting over their children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren, you will not be mourning. Yeah. God bless you.